Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to part five of our lecture series on the criminal procedure. This afternoon, we're going to discuss about preliminary investigation, rule 112. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. Rule 112, preliminary investigation. Okay. Now, what is the nature of the right of a preliminary of the right to preliminary investigation? Okay. Now, preliminary investigation is an inquiry or proceeding to determine whether there is a sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and that respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial. So this are the main components of a preliminary investigation. Number one, it is an inquiry. No? There is an inquisition or proceeding of determination. Now, that inquiry is to determine whether or not no, there is a sufficient reason to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and that the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held in for trial. So you will take note, class, that preliminary investigation is not a formal trial in court. As a matter of fact, when you say preliminary investigation, this is conducted not by the courts of law, but by the Department of Justice through the National Prosecution Service, be it Office of the Provincial Prosecutor or the Office of the City Prosecutor as the case may be. Now, a preliminary investigation is determination whether there is a sufficient evidence that a crime was committed and that number two, the respondent charge is probably guilty thereof. You will take note, class, of the word probably, no? The, the word probably which qualifies whether the respondent is guilty of the crime charge. Now, you will observe that the rules of court uses the word probably because, class, when a resolution is issued by the prosecutor's office, finding probable cause that means that the respondent is not yet guilty of the crime charge. Which is why the word guilty under Rule 112, Section 1, no, is qualified by the word probably, meaning it is only a probable cause. No respondent could have probably committed. No, it does not mean that the respondent is actually guilty beyond reasonable doubt of the crime charge. During preliminary investigation, the quantum of evidence or the weight of evidence necessary for the prosecutor to find probable cause no, is, is only a very low standard of evidence. The only question to be determined during preliminary investigation is not whether the accused is guilty of the crime charge beyond reasonable doubt. No? The only question in a preliminary investigation is whether the accused might have probably committed the crime or not. So remember, class, that in a preliminary investigation, the quantum of evidence is very low. No, it is very low. The only question, as a matter of fact, is whether the accused is probably, sa Tagalog, maaaring siya ang gumawa ng krimen. Maaari lamang. Maaari din namang hindi siya. Which is why after the conduct of preliminary investigation, an information is filed in court as what we have discussed during the last meeting. No? And that the trial will proceed in court. No? So preliminary investigation is a prelude for a formal trial in a court of law. Now, what is the nature of a preliminary investigation? 
it is merely inquisitorial and a means of determining the persons who may be reasonably charged with a crime. So it is inquisitorial. No, as opposed to antagonistic. No, because when you reach the courts, there are two opposing parties, the prosecution and the defense. The prosecution is represent or the, the the prosecution, the people of the Philippines is represented by the public prosecutor. No? And then the accused might be represented by the public attorney or if he has a private counsel by a defense counsel or counsel for the accused. So in court, the nature of the proceedings is adversarial. No adversarial. There are adversaries for the prosecution and for the accused. There are two parties. No? In a preliminary investigation, the nature is merely inquisitorial. It is not adversarial. When you say inquisitorial, the purpose of preliminary investigation is to determine sufficiency of evidence for the purpose of filing an information in court. It is not a trial of the case on merits. No? A preliminary investigation is not a trial of the case on merits. What do you mean by that, class? When you say that a preliminary investigation is not a trial on merits, that means that the technical rules on evidence will not apply or do not apply in a preliminary investigation. No? Tandaan niyan, class. A preliminary investigation is not a formal trial on merits. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Now, period when preliminary investigation is required to be conducted. Now, class, bear this in mind. Not all offenses, not all crimes, not all felonies require preliminary investigation. There are some crimes which do not require the conduct of preliminary investigation. No? What are crimes then that require preliminary investigation and what are the crimes that do not require preliminary investigation? Now, as a general rule, before the filing of a complaint or information for an offense, when the penalty prescribed by law is imprisonment of at least four years, two months, and one day without regard to the imposable fine. Now, class, yan lang ang figure that you have to remember. Four years, two months, and one day. If the crime charge is Im, uh, if the uh, rather if the penalty imposable for the crime charge is at least four years, two months, and one day, then preliminary investigation is required. I will repeat, ha. Huh? If the penalty of imprisonment imposable for the offense charge is at least four years, two months, and one day. Four, two, one. Without regard to the imposable fine, then a preliminary investigation is required. Huh? Take note. Okay. Now, there are exceptions from the general rule. Number one, where an information or complaint is filed pursuant to Section 7, Rule 112. For example, if the complaint or information is filed directly in court for cases requiring preliminary investigation that a person is lawfully arrested without a warrant, provided that inquest was made in accordance with Rule 112, Section 6. Okay, These are the exceptions where preliminary investigation is not required. Now let us discuss the exceptions one by one. Under the first exception class, 
a complaint or information can be filed directly in court. You do, you do not know you do, you do no longer have to file a complaint affidavit before the prosecutor's office. You can file your complaint directly in court. Now what are the what are the offenses that can be filed directly in court? Ang tawag diyan sa practice direct filing, no direct filing. Meaning you no longer have to undergo preliminary investigation before the office of the prosecutor. Now what are the offenses? Now it begs the question, what are the offenses which do not require preliminary investigation? Well, if under the general rule, if the offense is punishable by imprisonment of at least four years, two months, and one day, then offenses which are punishable by imprisonment of less than the threshold period of imprisonment, then it does not require preliminary investigation. Ibig sabihin, class, pag mas mababa ang imprisonment sa 4 to 1. No? If the imprisonment is less than four years, two months, and one day. Ano ba yung imprisonment of less than four years, two months, and one day? E di four years and two months below. Yan. If the offense is punishable by imprisonment of, le of uh, four years, two months, and below, then it does not require preliminary investigation, as easy as that, class. So remember the threshold period of imprisonment. So I will repeat, if the offense is punishable by imprisonment of at least four years, two months, and one day, then preliminary investigation is required, then you go file your complaint before the prosecutor's office. Clear, ha? Huh? Clear. Now, if the offense is four years and two months, and below, meaning four years and two months exact, no, it does not require preliminary investigation. And therefore, you go file directly your complaint in the court. So that is the first exception. Now, what is the second exception? Now, class, if the accused had been lawfully arrested without the benefit of a warrant of arrest, Huh? Yan ang tinatawag nating in flagrante delicto arrest. Ano ba yung in flagrante delicto class? Now, when you say in flagrante delicto, what do you mean by that? And especially you police officers in the future, you have to memorize the definition, the elements or the requisites of a valid warrantless arrest. Under the rules of court, the first warrantless arrest is arrest in flagrante delicto or in flagrante delicto arrest. Ano ba in flagrante delicto na yan, class? Now, if the accused has been caught as committing a crime, no, nakita mo na commit niya yung crime, naandun ka while the accused is committing the crime, no? So that is in flagrante delicto arrest. When a person is lawfully arrested without a warrant, no, provided that an inquest was made in accordance with Rule 112. Now, later on, class, we will discuss in details the instances of warrantless arrest. Ano ano ba ang mga instances of warrantless arrest? No, kailan ba pwedeng mag-effect ng arrest? without a warrant of arrest issued by the court. You remember class under your study of criminal law or the Vice Penal Code Book 1 and Book 2? You remember that uh, it is the, uh, the issuance of warrant of arrest may only be done by the judge. Diba? Magi issue si, si judge ng warrant of arrest and then e -e implement or e execute or it's a serve in warrant of arrest. And then that's the time that you can uh, um, effect arrest. On the other hand, the rules also allow 
the arrest of a person even without a warrant as long as all the requisites of the elements or the requirements are present. Now, we will discuss them in details. Okay. And at this juncture class, you have to bear in mind the uh, constitutional provision on the warrantless arrest. If you remember class, uh, you can find that under section 2 of article 3 of the constitution. No, ano ba sa ang haba niyan, class? I hope you memorize. No, you are future police officers. You have to memorize section 2 of article 3. Kasi sa trial, yan ang tatanungin sa inyo ng mga defense lawyer. I knew it. No, I knew it. No, when I when I do my cross examination to police officers, palagi ko pinare recite yan eh. Hmm. Pinare recite yan sa witness stand. And if you are not well versed, nako mamumutla, mamumutla. Hmm. Ano ba yung section 2 of article 3, di ba? Ang sabi ng constitution, the right of the people to be secured in their persons, houses, papers, and effects shall be inviolable. And no search warrant or warrant of arrest shall issue except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath of the complainant of the, and the witnesses he may produce, particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Yan ang codal provision. You have to memorize Section 2, Article 3. According to the Constitution, no person may be arrested without a warrant of arrest. But then again, the rules of court provide for the exceptions. Under these instances, a person may be arrested even without the benefit of a warrant of arrest in accordance with the Constitution. Remember that, class. But then again, class, if a person is arrested, even without a warrant of arrest, then you do not conduct a preliminary investigation. Instead, you conduct inquest. Inquest. Tandaan niyo yan, class. Kaya pag may nahuli ng walang, search war ng walang warrant of arrest, Ini-inquest ang tawag. Hindi preliminary investigation. Ha? Inquest. Mabilisan lang yan. Summary proceedings. Hmm. Siguro isang, isang pagkahuli mo, dadaling ka sa fiscal, okay? and then i-inquest ka. Kaya exception yan sa preliminary investigation. Kasi nahuli ka. Hmm. You are caught as committing a crime. Hmm. Valid yung warrantless arrest. So you don't go under the regular procedure of preliminary investigation, but you go to the inquest proceedings. Prosecutor din ang nagko-conduct ng inquest proceedings. Malas mo lang, pag nahuli ka ng weekend, walang prosecutor on duty. Kaya hindi ka may inquest so, makukulong ka ng dalawang araw. Aantayin mo ang lunes. Oh, by the way, class, I remember. In your study of the revised penal code, meron kayong tinatawag na illegal detention. Diba? Illegal detention. Naalala niya yan, class. Illegal detention. Pagka kayo ay humuli, kailangan i-turn over nyo na yan. Agad-agad sa prosecutor on duty for inquest. No? Kasi pag hindi niya ang tinurn over, pag hindi kayo nagsampa ng kaso, pwede kayong mademanda ng illegal detention. You remember Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code? You remember Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code? Nandiyan nakalagay ang mga periods for example, 12 hours, 18 hours, di ba? So let me check it. You have to turn over yung, uh, yung person under arrest. Otherwise, pag hindi mo yan sinampahan ng kaso at hindi mo yan pinalaya, oh, pwede kang mademanda ng Delay in the delivery of detained persons. Ito, this is Article 125. 
of the revised penal code. You have to memorize this also, class. Okay? Delay in the delivery of detained persons to the proper judicial authorities. The penalties provided in the next preceding article shall be imposed upon the public officer or employee who shall detain any person to the, pro to the proper judicial authorities within the period of six hours for crimes, offense, punishment, etc., etc. So 18 hours if the crime calls for an afflictive or capital penalty. No, alam ko, amended na to eh. Hmm. Teka, let me check. Let me pull out my book. Tandaan niya ang klasa, you have to submit the detent the uh, person under arrest to the prosecutor's office. Pag hindi nyo tinan over yan, pwede kayong mademanda ng delay in the delivery of detained persons. The article 125. Let me go over it. I have to, to memorize, ha? Huh? Arbitrary detention. Okay. Hmm. How about is the period? 12 hours, 18 hours, and 36 hours, depending on the penalty. So 12 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by light pe felonies, or light penalties rather, 18 hours for crimes and or offenses punishable by correctional penalties or their equivalent, and 36 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by afflictive or capital penalties. For example, the crime of murder. Diba? What is the penalty for murder? Reclusion perpetua. 20 years and one day to 40 years. So, afflictive penalty yan under the revised penal code. Now, what is the period of time? 36 hours. Kasi afflictive or capital penalty siya. Actually, hindi siya capital penalty, afflictive siya. The capital penalty is death. Okay? So, 12 hours for light penalties, 18 hours for afflict, 18 hours for correctional penalty, and then 36 hours for afflictive or capital penalties. Take note of that. Huh? Hindi pwedeng lumampas. From the time na naibook nyo yan for arrest, bibilang na yung oras na yan. 18, uh, 12, 18, 36. 12 hours for light penal penalties, 18 hours for correctional penalties, and 36 hours for afflictive or capital penalties. Tandaan nyo yan. Pag nahuli nyo yan, dalhin nyo agad for inquest. Otherwise, you will be held liable for arbitrary detention or illegal detention. Ha, pwede kayong makasuhan ng kriminal. Okay. Now, class, pag nahuli nyo yan at walang warrant of arrest kasi in flagrante delicto or marami kasing instances of uh, uh, warrantless arrest, a valid valid warrantless arrest. no? For example, in flagrante delicto under section 1 and then pwede na, for example, yung hot pursuit na sinasab sinasabi. Halimbawa, nakita mo, may sinaksak and then may naglalakad, may hawak na kutsilyo, Di ba hot pursuit yan? The crime had just been committed. Okay? Now, uh, pwede rin namang if the person to be arrested is uh, an escapee from detention facility, tumakas sa kulungan, alam naman kumuka pa ng warrantless arrest, pwede mo na siyang arrestuhin. Okay? So these are the instances of warrantless arrest, but we will go into them into details. Huh? We will go to them in details, rather. Okay? So take note that these are the two exceptions from the preliminary investigation. Huh? Pagka na-arrest to me without warrant of arrest, again, take note, inquest. Ha, inquest. 
hindi preliminary investigation. Okay. Now, kanina nabanggit ko sa inyo, the period of 18 hours, 26 hours, uh, 18, uh, 12, 18, 36 hours. Okay? Hindi yan tatakbo kapag weekend kasi walang prosecutor on duty. Okay? So, bibilang ka na ng 1 hour, second hour sa Monday. Okay? Ganun. Okay. Now, what are the documents accompanying the complaint? The complaint should should accompany or should attach the affidavits of the complainant, the affidavits of the witnesses he may produce, and other supporting documents that would establish probable cause. Lahat ang ebidensya mo, yung salaysay ng testigo mo, attach mo doon. Lahat ng ebidensyang magpapatunay no? ng probable cause o ng batayan upang maisakdal ang respondente, kailangan i-file mo yan sa complaint mo during preliminary investigation. Now, si, uh, ano ba ang duties ng investigating officer? Ang tawag natin dyan is investiga investigating prosecutor. O yan ang tawag na sa practice. Okay. From the filing of the complaint, the investigating officer has 10 days within which to decide on which of the following options to take. Pagka-receive ng investigating officer, meaning the prosecutor, the investigating prosecutor, no? within 10 days, meron siyang options. Number one, pwede niya i-dismiss. Pwede niya i-dismiss outright. Pag sinabi outright, pagka-file mo pa lang, di, hindi na pasasagutin yung kalaban mo, i-dismiss na. Outright dismissal. The prosecutor can dismiss the complaint if he finds no ground to conduct the investigation. So it does not mean na nag-file ka, pwedeng mag-conduct ng automatically mag-conduct ng preliminary investigation. If the investigating prosecutor finds no ground to conduct preliminary investigation, then he will dismiss outright your complaint. Now, number two, the investigating prosecutor can issue a subpoena in case he finds the need to continue with the investigation, in which case the subpoena shall be accompanied by the complaint and its supporting affidavits and documents. Yan. Pag nakita ng binasa ng investigating prosecutor, o oh, mukhang may batayan itong complaint na ito. Pasagutin natin yung respondent. Mag-issue ako ng subpoena. In practice class, palagi na namang nag issue ng subpoena. Unless, no, kitang-kita on the face of the complaint. For example, dapat final mo sa, sa, sa binyan. Kasi doon na-commit yung crime, tapos final mo sa ibang lugar. Hmm. Pwede na i-dismiss yan, moto proprio. No, outright. But, if there is a ground to continue for the investigation, then the investigating prosecutor will issue the subpoena and allow the respondent to file his or her counter affidavit. Huh? Ang if you file ng complaint, na complaint affidavit. And then the respondent counter affidavit. Hmm. Now, the investigating prosecutor will have to attach to the subpoena the copy of the complaint and the supporting affidavits and evidence. So in practice class, yung ibang prosecutor, Pag nagpadala sila ng sapina, hindi mo na nila ina-attach ang complaint. Kasi minsan nawawala. Okay? So papaapirin nila yung respondent during a hearing at dun siya bibigyan ng copy ng complaint, supporting affidavits, and evidence. And then bibigyan siya ng period of time within which to file his or her counter affidavit. Okay? So, depende yan sa practice. Iba-iba ang ginagawa nila. Okay? Now, can you file a motion to dismiss during a preliminary investigation? 
Halimbawa, ikaw ang respondent na padala ka ng subpoena, pwede ka mag ng motion to dismiss. No? As a general rule, in preliminary investigation, a motion to dismiss is not an accepted pleading. For it merely alleges the innocence of the respondent without rebutting or repudiating the evidence of the complainant. So as a rule class, hindi allowed ang filing ng motion to dismiss. No? Exception, when it contains countervailing evidence or defenses and evidence which rebuts or repudiates the charges, in which case it will be treated as a counter affidavit. Halimbawa, the complaint affidavit was poorly written. Yung depensa ng kalaban niya, nilagay niya na doon. Mm. And on the basis of those evidence contained in the complaint, maari nang ma-dismiss. O di pwede kang mag ng motion to dismiss. Because the complaint in itself have admitted some countervailing evidence or defenses. Okay? Now, is clarificatory hearing mandatory? Ano ba yung clarificatory hearing class? Pag sinabing clarificatory hearing, yun yung tatanungin pa ng fiscal. O, totoo ba? Manaan doon ka nung araw ng patayan, etc. May mga clarificatory hearing. O, sinong kasama mo nung nandun ka? Hmm. O kaya pwede tanongin yung mga witnesses, mga clarification, clarificatory questions. Kung meron silang salaysay, medyo malabo, ang pagkakasalaysay nila, pwedeng magtanong ang investigating prosecutor during a hearing. Ang tawag dyan, clarificatory questioning or clarificatory hearing. Now, is it mandatory during a preliminary investigation? No? A hearing may be set by the investigating officer only when there are facts and issues to be clarified either from a party or a witness which shall be conducted within 10 days from the submission of the counter affidavit and other affidavits and documents filed by the respondent. Now, the parties do not have the right to examine or cross-examine each other or the witnesses. Tanda niya ang class ha? Kasi nga, the nature of preliminary investigation is inquisitorial. It is not adversarial. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo pwedeng i-cross-examine yung kalaban mo. Ano ba yung cross-examination? Mag-propound ka ng questions. Hmm, parang ahuli mo kung nagsisinungaling siya o hindi. Hmm. In a preliminary investigation, walang cross-examination. Hindi mo pwedeng i-examine yung kalaban mo or yung witness niya. Magsasubmit lang kayo ng affidavit. Bahala na kayong magsagutan on paper. No? Pero yung, yung verbal examination, yung cross-examination, these are not allowed during a preliminary investigation because again, it is not trial on merits. It is merely inquisitorial. Okay. Now, if they have questions to ask, they shall submit the questions to the investigating officer who shall ask the questions. Kung meron kang gustong ipatanong, submit mo sa investigating prosecutor and the investigating prosecutor will be the one to propound questions. Okay. Now, what is the duty of the prosecutor after the termination of the investigation? Nabawa, nag-issue na na sa pina. Nag nagsumagot na yung respondent. nag na ng counter affidavit. Now, within 10 days from the termination of the investigation, the investigating prosecutor shall determine whether or not there is a sufficient ground to hold respondent for trial. So mag, magre-resolve na siya. Ang tawag doon, resolution. No, Ire-resolve niya na yung complaint. The prosecutor will determine whether or not there is a sufficient ground to hold respondent for trial. Section 3F of Rule 112. Afterwards, if the investigating officer finds cause to hold the respondent for trial, he shall, he shall prepare the resolution and information. Class, ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng resolution sa information? Class, yung resolution, yun ang conclusion. Yun ang findings ng investigating prosecutor. Doon may narration of facts 
kukwento niya ano ang, ano ang allegations ng complainant. Sasabihin niya doon ano ang defenses ng respondents. And then, i-evaluate niya kung sino ang nagsasabi ng totoo. Kung whose arguments is more weighty than the other. Yan, itimbangin niya. The investigating prosecutor will calibrate the evidence, the soundness of the arguments, and the logic, the consistency, factual and legal. Yan ang tinatawag natin na resolution. No? Again, mahaba yan class ang resolution. Kukwento ng prosecutor dyan. Ito ang sinabi ni complainant. Ito ang sinabi ng respondent. Ito ang findings ko. Yan. I-apply niya ang batas from the given facts. Okay. That is resolution. Ano yung information class? Information. No? When you say information, ito yung... Uh, Demanda. Ito yung asunto na tinatawag sa Tagalog. Yung information, it will contain the, the act or omissions complained of constituting the crime. No, kung ano yung ginawa mo, yun ang nakalagay dyan. Yung krimen, recital of the facts constituting the elements of the crime. Yun ang nakalagay dyan. At ano ang na-violate mo na batas? Yan ang information. Yan ang ipinafile sa court, yung information. Okay? Otherwise, if the investigating prosecutor do, uh, does not find a ground to hold respondent for trial, he will recommend the dismissal of the complaint. Section 4 of Rule 112 class. Bakit yan nakalagay sa rules? He shall recommend the dismissal of the complaint. Bakit recommend? Bakit hindi na lang siyang mag-dismiss? Total siya naman ng investigating prosecutor. Okay. Under our prosecutorial system in the Philippines, dalawa ang in charge in during preliminary investigation. Merong investigating prosecutor, meaning siya yung, siya yung nag-issue ng sabina, siya yung tumanggap ng affidavits, siya yung mag-aaral ng kaso, at siya ang magre-resolve. But the resolution is merely recommendatory in nature. Huh? That the findings of the investigating prosecutor is merely recommendatory. Aaprobahan pa yan ng provincial prosecutor or ng city prosecutor as the case may be. Kaya dalawa, may investigating prosecutor and may approving authority. And that is the provincial prosecutor or the city prosecutor under our prosecutorial system. Ha? Hindi ibig sabihin, ang bawa, kasi it guards the conduct of the preliminary investigation from what? Corruption. Di ba? Pwede mo bayaran investigating prosecutor mo. Well, hindi ko naman sinabing nababayaran sila. No? Pag na, for example, there is a bias. Huwag na sabihin na nabayaran. No? For example, there is bias on the part of the prosecutor or he is very close to the counsel for the complainant. No? The, the vote must, might be uh, leaning towards the other party. No? Or the scale of justice is tilted in favor of one party. At least, meron pa siyang reviewing prosecutor. Babasahin niya no? kung ano yung resolution. If the investig if the city prosecutor finds that the resolution is questionable, pwede niyang i-disapprove, no? Kaya yung yung resolution ng investigating prosecutor is only recommendatory in nature. Kailangan may approval ng city prosecutor and the provincial prosecutor, okay? Remember that. Ano ba ang purposes? Ano bang objectives ng preliminary investigation? Number one, for the investigating prosecutor to determine if the crime has been committed. No? Alamin kung merong kriming nagawa. To protect the accused from inconvenience, expense, and the burden of defending himself in a formal trial unless probability of his guilt is first ascertained by a competent officer. Bago ka dalhin sa husgado at mapahiya ka doon kasi may formal trial, public trial, sa preliminary investigation ka muna. Sasalain muna ng, 
ng ng prosecution office kung may batayan ang reklamo sa iyo. Kung walang batayan, dismiss. Preliminary investigation will protect the accused from the inconvenience, expense, and burden of a public trial. Ha? Okay. Now, number three. To secure the innocent against hasty, malicious, and oppressive prosecution and to protect him from an open and public accusation of a crime and the anxiety of a public trial. No? Self-explanatory. To protect the state from having to conduct useless and expensive trial. And number five, to determine the amount of bail if the offense is bailable. Kaya class, kayo, pag nasa practice na kayo, no? As police officers. May mga offenses na bailable. May mga offenses na non-bailable. Diba? Ang sabi ng, ng batas, if the offense is punishable by reclusion perpetua or death, and the evidence of guilt is strong, no? you cannot post bail. Pwede ka lang magpiyansa if the offense is not punishable by reclusion perpetua or death. But even if the offense is punishable by reclusion perpetua or death, if the evidence of guilt is not strong, you can still post bail. Eh, paano mo malalaman kung magkano yung piyansa? How can you determine the amount of bail? Tignan mo doon sa resolution, nasa likod yun. Nakalagay doon, amount of bail. And that is one of the purposes of a preliminary investigation so that the amount of bail can be fixed by the prosecutor. Sa practice class, pagka masyado namang mahal yung nilagay na bail, pwede naman yan babaan. Mag-file ka ng motion to reduce bail. Yan. Okay. Now, can you waive? Can you renounce your right to a preliminary investigation? Yes. No? Pwede mong i-waive yan, yung right to preliminary investigation. No? A preliminary investigation is deemed waived by the express waiver or silence. The failure to invoke it during arraignment and consenting to be arraigned and entering a plea of not guilty without invoking the right to preliminary investigation. The waiver, whether expressed or implied, must be in a clear and unequivocal manner. When you say unequivocal, there is no doubt. No? Okay. It is not susceptible of different interpretations. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng unequivocal. Now class, ang preliminary investigation kasi is only a statutory right. Hindi yan constitutional right. Wala sa constitution yung preliminary investigation na yan. It is merely statutory. And therefore, it can be waived. Okay? Now, absence of preliminary investigation. No? The absence of preliminary investigation does not become a ground for motion to quash the complaint or information as it does not impair the validity of the information or affect the jurisdiction of the trial court. No? It likewise does not affect the court's jurisdiction but merely the regularity of the proceedings. No? Then third, it impairs the validity, it does not impair rather the validity of the information and justify the release of the respondent or nullify the warrant again warrant of arrest against him take note class ha okay kasi class pag walang preliminary investigation pwede kang mag-ask that the uh, the case be remanded to a to uh, to the prosecutor for preliminary investigation preliminary investigation kasi karapatan niya ng akusado okay but you can only raise that before arraignment pag hindi mo yan, or during arraignment, pag nag-arraignment na at hindi mo ni-raise na hindi kayo nag-conduct ng preliminary investigation, then there is a waiver of the right to a preliminary investigation. Okay. Now, what are the rights of the respondent in a preliminary investigation? Number one, the respondent can submit a counter-affidavit 
can examine the evidence submitted by the complainant at his own expense and be present during the clarificatory hearing. Now, who may conduct the termination of existence of probable cause? Number one, probable cause in a preliminary investigation is defined as the existence of such facts and circumstances at, as would excite belief in a reasonable mind acting on the acts within the knowledge of the prosecutor that the person, person charged was prosecuted. It is not a pronouncement of the guilt. Now, who are the persons authorized to conduct investigation or preliminary investigation? Number one, the provincial or city prosecutor and their assistant. Number two, the regional and the national and regional state prosecutors. And number three, other officers as may be authorized by law. For example, the ombudsman is authorized to is uh, is authorized is, is an authorized officer deputized by Comelec for election of uh, offenses. No. It can be the ombudsman. No, the ombudsman likewise uh, conduct preliminary investigation in cases of uh, graft and corruption. Okay, and then such other authorized officers as deputized by the commission on election in cases of election offenses. Now, court interference in the conduct of preliminary investigation as a general rule class. The court cannot interfere in the conduct of preliminary investigations, leaving the, investig the investigation or the investigatory officers a sufficient discretion to determine probable cause. Exception to this rule is when the acts of the officer are without or in excess of authority, resulting to a grave abuse of discretion. Now, what is the extent of the authority of the ombudsman in the conduct of preliminary investigation? The ombudsman class has the primary authority to investigate and it, it has the exclusive authority to file and prosecute Sandigan Bayan cases. No? Sandigan Bayan, this is a special court. Now, the ombudsman is authorized to take over at any stage from any investigatory agency of the government, the investigation of such cases. Party to conduct preliminary investigation in election cases. In election cases class, it is the Commission on Elections or the COMELEC who is vested with the power to conduct preliminary investigations. However, COMELEC class can deputize other prosecuting arms of the government to conduct preliminary investigation and prosecute offenses. So this ends our presentation. I'll see you again next meeting. Thank you.